Okay, so let's talk about a further application of using this uh, live on stage. Uh, in this scenario, I think really uh, a lot applies to particularly worship leaders. And that's the idea of flowing with tracks or being spontaneous with tracks. Um, and there's a couple things I kind of wrote down as particular moves that I do on stage. We talked about uh, a few of them uh, in the previous lesson, but I want to kind of telegraph you through what they are and then how I achieve them and how you can achieve them really easily with the template. Now, at a certain point, you're going to realize I'm going to run out of space on my MIDI controller to map all this. So I think for you, a couple things you need to think through is one, what of these that I show you, are you actually going to apply? If you need six buttons to map all these and have access to them on your MIDI controller, then great. Buy a MIDI controller that has six buttons you may not need all of this functionality or you may have your laptop next to you and you can do some of this without a mini controller but these are things to to think through okay so let's start at the beginning uh, i mentioned this uh, at, at first but with my global quantization set at one bar um, i can press play okay and and just so you know i'm going to use my midi controller to navigate using the previous and next buttons okay so i'm pressing play i'm in the intro suddenly i know we want to go to the chorus so i'm going to press next two three okay and that's going to jump me directly to the chorus okay and what i want to be aware of when i do that let's turn this track off just for now what i want to be aware of when i do that is i have one measure to make that change happen Okay, so uh, I have any amount of space, you know, however far I can get in one measure. Let's go back to our intro. Okay, and that I think takes me back. Oh, that was our verse, so I'd have to go one more. Uh, I also probably want to zoom out a little bit so I can see more of the song and navigate it. But I have one measure to make the change. So I typically I'm going to wait till the middle of the section, right? Uh, which is which is a good good time to do that. But I could jump in the middle of a section, middle of a song section if I wanted. And again, I'm doing all of that with previous and next is how I'm jumping through there. Let's turn the tracks on so you can hear. Okay, so this is going to be in the middle of the verse, which is going to be Let's go back to the track. So that's how I can navigate my songs. Now, obviously I have my uh, guide queue uh, because there's some uh, unfortunate glitching right now uh, at the moment with Live 11 and this guide queue player. I have this guide queue player turned off, but if I was skipping around, what you would basically hear is you would hear the guide queue for the section um, that I'm about to go into uh, instead of me kind of jumping around and doing this. So what I typically suggest in that moment is what you might want to do, let's jump back over to Ableton, is MIDI map your guide so that you have kind of a, um, a, a fail safe to basically kill this. If you're not using your dynamic guide, uh, you could just mute, uh, map your guide here so that you turn that off. Uh, if you had something like the, the Oakboard Slide Duo over here, this could be really helpful because again, you could map, you know, all your tracks here. You can map your guide here. And if you're going to do something spontaneously, just pull your guide down really quick, you know, jump around. And then when you're back in the section you need, you could bring that guide up if you wanted. Um, but that's something I do often is really jump around, <coughs> excuse me, jump around and navigate my set um, using those previous and next buttons. The typical default routing for me or mapping for me really is play, stop, previous, and next. That's what I'm doing most of the time with sets. I also then have like my one button repeat set up. So there's my play, and then I press this. And what that does by me doing that is it enables repeat, it enables the new dynamic guide cue, and kills the guide track. And that's just gonna keep that moving over and over. That's just gonna keep that looping over and over until you're ready to move on. Uh, again, this is something I use all the time in a uh, worship context at the top of a song and maybe in the middle of a bridge if someone wants to speak, someone's praying, reading scripture or whatever. But I think this applies in any situation where you're working with an artist and you want them to have freedom and flexibility. Uh, the loop thing I think is really helpful when you have a musical phrase you're playing. But I'm not going to move on from this phrase in the middle of it. I'm going to wait for the phrase to be complete. But I'm going to know as I'm working with the artist at some point when they're ready to go. And so I'll disable it. And that just means at the end of this section, it's just going to go on, right? Everything's going to go back to normal, which is great. So that's another move that I do often. Uh, and again, by using the guide and dynamic guide, that's how I'm getting kind of that flip to between those so that I hear the correct guide cue in the moment. Um, that could be another one, though. If you don't want to use dynamic guide, uh, you could just assign that to a fader, uh, assign that to a button, 
and kill the guide in that moment if you want to. Um, let's talk about two more scenarios uh, with being spontaneous uh, that I think could could be really helpful. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, then we'll kind of go from there and, and um, see if there's any other scenarios we can drum up uh, later based on feedback from you guys. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, skipping songs. And this one's going to be a little weird, but let's say we're press play, we're in song one. And we talked about this uh, a little bit with our song select cues. But let's say we want to go from song one to song four. Um, and I, you know, I start the song and the MD says, hey, we're going to, and the MD mic says, hey, we're going to go to song four. So what I could do is go to the songs track here. Again, I have to have my computer somewhat nearby to, to be spontaneous enough to adjust this. But I'm going to drop this uh, song four clip right here. And I'm going to get to the end of this song. And I'm putting in the last measure here. Uh, I'm going to get to the end of this song here. Let's bring our fader up. One, two, three, four. Boom. I'm into song four. Okay. So I can make that change really simply, really easily. I don't have to do tons of craziness on stage to make it happen. Um, I, I mean, it is worth mentioning just for the sake of over communicating. I could literally in this, in that scenario, get to the end of song one, press stop press song for press play you know here or here to make that happen but what's kind of nice about that again is if you have your computer nearby and you have one hand that can go in and move those clips you could really easily change the structure and order of your songs uh, really really simply um, so let me delete that before I forget um, now let's talk about another scenario that I think is less common but I've seen happen uh, again this is probably more of a worship leader application than anything else like i don't know that i would see a lot of artists uh, doing this but let's say you're doing a song like this song we've been using you keep coming after me it's got tracks but for some reason you want us you know this to be your opener you want it to be somewhere in the set where you just kind of flow into this and one of the ways you want to flow into this song is to um is to just basically start the song at whatever tempo and then have your tracks follow now uh one of the things that um uh, one of the things that, again, um, most people would say is, okay, for this arrangement, for this particular version, uh, we're just going to not use tracks for that. But with Ableton Live, it's possible. So let's take a look at how. So I'm going to go into mini map mode here, and I'm going to mini map this tap tempo button. Okay. So I'm going to map this button here. I'm going to just double check. I haven't mapped anything else. Okay, great. That's mapped to uh, tap tempo now. So I can get out of here. Uh, let's go over to our MIDI controller. Um, and I'm going to double press stop. And let's say we're, we're starting with song one. And I could go through and select whatever song I wanted to apply this to. But let's say we're going to do this with song one. So um, the artist I'm working with is starting the song. Uh, they're just going to start at whatever tempo. And so what I'm going to do is tap tempo to the tempo that they are playing at. Okay, And hopefully they get to where they're somewhat consistent. So let's say... Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so because our tracks are warped, um, they may not sound great, they may sound silly at that uh, fast of a tempo, but because our tracks are warped, uh, they're going to adjust. Because I tap the tempo here, the tempo is going to adjust, which is great. And we could just go and do our song like normal uh, and fly through it just like uh, like normal. Uh, and But if we wanted to get back to our original tempo, I mean, you could literally do this while it's playing. It's, it, it ain't going to sound great, but let's press play here. Okay, then I could re-enable automation. And I guess if I was going to do this, probably a good place to do this would be... Um, the end of a verse, you know, before I go into the next verse or something. Let's see. All right. One, two, three, four. Right. Again, it's not great. It's not a perfect transition, but I, I go to show you that to say what's cool is, I mean, you could literally start at whatever tempo you, you want to slowly ramp up to that. Uh, you could use our uh, tempo nudge up, nudge down commands if you wanted uh, so that you can, uh, you know, nudge those and get them slowly sped up to the correct tempo. Uh, and then when you're ready and you finally have that dialed in uh, at the correct tempo, then again, you can go back to the regular um, 
uh, go back to your regular default automation at that point. Um, so again, that's that's maybe a little more boutique or rare kind of uh, solution or thing you can do to be spontaneous. Um, but there's a lot of really, really great uh, scenarios where you can apply that and those basic principles. And so uh, try some of those out. Let me know how they work. And again, I think if anything, it's going to give you job security over other people that don't know how to do that or that claim, oh, we can't do that because we're playing with tracks. That's not a great answer to me. We can do that if we're playing with tracks. You just got to know how to do that.